The road back to the moon is pretty difficult, but it's strange that NASA seems to be making it even harder. Do you remember the Lunar Gateway? You could be forgiven if you don't, as the program is still under consideration by NASA planners, and it's still not entirely clear of what the purpose of the Lunar Space Station is. Notably, this project's recently been found to have a lot of serious issues, starting with its most basic functions. Moreover, its progress is tied to a rocket notorious for delays, high costs, and technical problems, the SLS. Is it time to cancel them? Is SpaceX's Starship being considered as the solution? All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before getting into the main content, we want to let you know, thanks for supporting our channel these last couple years. We are very close to the 100,000 sub mark. And to hit this goal, we do need your help. So if you're watching this video, please just take a fraction of a second, press that subscribe button, and that way you'll never miss out on any of our future videos. All right, back into it. Lunar Gateway, formerly known as Deep Space Gateway when it was first envisioned during the Obama years, and later as the Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway, is planned for an elliptical orbit of the Moon and, as its name suggests, will serve as gateway to the lunar surface. Astronauts aboard Orion will dock at the Lunar Gateway and transfer to the Human Landing System, or the HLS as we know it, for the remaining journey to the Moon's surface. NASA chose to retain gateway and repurpose it for Artemis primarily because Orion can't enter low lunar orbit or leave after completing its mission. Orion can dock with Lunar Gateway in a highly elliptical polar orbit, flying 3,000 kilometers above the Moon's North Pole and about 70,000 kilometers above its South Pole. HLS will depart from the Lunar Gateway and land on the Moon's surface. After the surface mission is done, HLS lifts off and docks with the Gateway, and the crew will transfer back to Orion to return to Earth. Meanwhile, Lunar Gateway will be a base where HLS will get refurbished and refueled. Originally, the Lunar Space Station was expected to launch in 2022, but unfortunately that did not happen, and now, according to a new report from the GAO, NASA doesn't expect to launch the initial components of the Gateway until at least December 2027. The estimated baseline cost is a little over $5 billion. NASA's current plan envisions the Gateway as part of the Artemis IV mission, which is now scheduled for September 2028. Unfortunately, the Gateway's current launch target is three months later than needed to support Artemis IV the second mission to send humans to the moon. Additionally, the Gateway program is currently facing quite significant technical challenges. This pertains to something called stacking control capability. Essentially, if Starship and other vehicles connect to the Gateway, they could affect its ability to maintain its proper orbital alignment. This would disrupt the communication with the Lunar Gateway and prevent other vehicles from docking. The report states that the mass of Starship is 18 times the value NASA used to develop the control parameters for Gateway's Power and Propulsion Element, or PPE. Program officials are evaluating ways to mitigate the risks associated with docking large vehicles, including having visiting spacecraft fire their thrusters to share some control responsibilities with a PPE when docking with Lunar Gateway. Even if they find an effective solution for lunar missions, this issue poses a bigger risk to Gateway's ability to support future missions up to Mars. The Lunar Gateway is seen as NASA's way to chart a course for the first human missions to Mars by serving as a staging area for spacecraft en route to the Red Planet. However, difficulties in accommodating large vehicles could derail those plans. Furthermore, the Gateway is designed for a 15-year lifespan, meaning it could reach the end of its time in space just as Mars missions are starting to launch. Moreover, one issue involves a faulty network chip that facilitates communication across the Lunar Space Station. Its failure could cause numerous problems aboard the Gateway. For example, these defects could lead the flight computers to unexpectedly restart the report states. If the network is not functioning properly, it could result in loss of control of the Gateway. Program officials are also concerned that they might identify more defects with the communications network based on the number found already. While the initial components of Lunar Gateway will be launched using SpaceX's commercial Falcon Heavy rocket, most of it will be launched with the SLS in the late 2020s and early 2030s. Regarding Falcon Heavy, there may be no major concern since it's already proven to be a stable launch vehicle. However, SLS is a different story as it comes with exorbitant costs, and with its traditional engineering methods, it can only launch once a year. SLS was designed in the early 2000s when reusability was more experimental than practical or seriously being considered. Sure, Space Shuttle has been flying for a long time, but by that point, 
Refurbishing it was extremely expensive, took a long time to prepare between flights, and there wasn't much of a budget for repairs. SLS was promised to be cheaper than alternatives because it reused old hardware from the space shuttle, but it still ended up being billions of dollars over budget. Meanwhile, NASA was unsure of what to do. They were required by Congress to pursue a certain project. If you have enough members of Congress saying, build this rocket, then they'll do it, even if there are still better technical solutions. In fact, to fund SLS, NASA has been forced to gradually cut valuable exploration, science, and development programs. SLS has stripped NASA of its purpose and funneled taxpayer money into a useless job creation program. As a result of this reluctant development, after decades of work, the rocket has only flown once as of 2022. Worse yet, in the calendar year 2024, NASA decided not to schedule any launches. Furthermore, it's now facing issues with technical problems due to quality control issues during construction. NASA's Office of Inspector General reported significant problems with Boeing's work on the newer version of the SLS Block 1B. OIG found that the work being done by Boeing, the primary contractor for the SLS core and upper stages, as well as the rocket's avionics at NASA's assembly facility in New Orleans, did not meet international standards or the agency's requirements. This has led to multiple corrective action requests issued by the Defense Contract Management Agency. CARs, which can vary in severity, indicate that the work did not comply with specific contractual requirements. The quality control errors at Michaud were largely due to Boeing not having enough trained and experienced aerospace workers. Boeing's insufficient training and supervision efforts have failed to mitigate these shortcomings, and that raises some serious concerns about the safety and reliability of SLS components. This could cause delays even for the already delayed Artemis 4 mission, which is planned for September 2028 and may not be achievable. And naturally, the already high costs will increase even more. The estimated cost for the SLS Block 1B is estimated to reach about $5.7 billion before the planned launch in 2028. This is $700 million higher than NASA's 2023 baseline commitment, which set the cost and schedule baseline at nearly $5 billion. However, NASA can't abandon SLS. With the agency's constantly revised plans and schedules, we can all see their stubbornness. This will require most, if not all, all of the SLS's capacity during that time frame, and it may prevent the agency from focusing more on surface activities on the moon. This means that lunar surface exploration, including building a base on the moon, is simply going to get delayed for many more years. I truly feel that integrating SLS launches to assemble Lunar Gateway is an impossible task. Even if they were to get it done, the project would neither be on time nor really that meaningful. The solution to this issue came in April 2021 when NASA selected SpaceX's Starship as the lunar lander. Starship is larger than the proposed Gateway and duplicates many of the power and propulsion capabilities of the Gateway. So if you already have a Starship as part of your lunar architecture, and if NASA is truly focused on lunar surface ops, why would you spend a decade and tens of billions of dollars building the Gateway? All these issues are going to slow progress of Artemis' program. But regarding the Lunar Gateway, we need to reconsider the question posed by John Hobel, the engineer who developed the lunar orbit rendezvous that landed Americans on the moon during the Apollo years. Do we want to return to the moon or not? If we do want to go back to the moon, then it's time for NASA to cancel or at least postpone Lunar Gateway and just move forward. Some people at NASA are arguing that Lunar Gateway, which will serve as a human-operated space station in orbit around the moon, is necessary to test technologies that could support astronauts on their journey to Mars. Considering that the ISS already exists and several commercial space stations are being planned, this argument seems highly questionable. However, if a space station in lunar orbit is indeed required for going up to Mars, it would be reasonable to step back and rethink while clearing it out of the critical path for going back to the moon. For example, a SpaceX Starship could easily be equipped as a lunar gateway. Will anyone at NASA, Congress, or even the White House be willing to take the political heat and cut the Gordian knot? The answer to that question will determine our seriousness about becoming a true deep spacefaring nation and the leader of the efforts to get back to the moon. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much and see you next time.